Bois. We're going to do a five minute video. And what I want to talk about is the importance of naming your company. So I just did a one minute video, but to do a quick recap, when you pick the name of your company, a lot of times it's going to be not the actual name that you're doing business in. So let me elaborate a little bit more. So when we are creating a company, typically we're picking between LLC or corporation, and oftentimes we're doing it in either a state that's local, so I'm in Florida, so I set up a Florida company, or a state that might have some advantage, like Wyoming and Delaware, which are two of the most popular nowadays for out of state, and, and you can do it that way. And a lot of times what we're doing for companies is we're creating a Delaware company to be owned by them directly. Delaware offers a lot of privacy, and then that company will own a subsidiary, in this case, a Florida company, and then that company could be the one that's actually out there in the world with a bank account, making money and having clients. Um, and, and then going down the list, the name of the company always has to include an, either an LLC or an Inc or a Corp uh, or a corporation or a co. And so these must be in the name. Now, a lot of times we want to drop that from the name. So I'll give you an example. EPGD Attorneys at Law PA is the full official birth certificate name of the company. That is the legal name of the company. Then separately, we registered what's called a fictitious business name, or you've heard of it probably as a DBA doing business as. And so that here in the state of Florida is $10 a year or $50 for five years. And you need to remember to renew it. And what we've done there is we registered EPGD Law, um, and then what we ended up using much more was EPGD business law. And so that is, then we took it a step further. We went ahead and registered some trademarks for EPGD business law. So the name, the official name has the PA, it's the full thing, EPGD attorneys at law PA, but then the unofficial name or the doing business as name and the name that we actually put on our business cards and that we advertise to our clients is EPGD business law. Okay. Now, why is this important? Well, take it a step further. If when you're out there in the world, if something legal happens, they're going to go after the official name of the company. So you would sue, well, please don't, EPGD Attorneys at Law PA, DBA, EPGD Business Law, right? So I have a client with a very generic name. Now, what do I mean by generic? Sometimes we intentionally create names that have no specific meaning, right? So um, my initials, EPGD. So it could be EPGD Holding Company, right? That, that, that has no meaning. Or maybe my initials plus Deirdre's initials, right? So it could be DDN EPGD Holding Group. And sometimes we'll just throw in some generic names like well, enterprises. I like to use the word enterprises or ventures. Um, holdings is a good one. So if it's going to be real estate, maybe it'll be EPGD Real Estate Holdings, right? And so these names, at a certain point, I'm not out there in the world in this scenario going to be making money off of my EPGD Holdings company. It might just be a place where I put some investments that even there I might have a different DBA or a different uh, trademark if I was going to be actually doing that. Now, sometimes you pick something that's so generic that actually you get mistakenly sued because somebody doesn't know that you're not whoever it is they thought they were suing. So I have a case right now where a lady has a very generic, no real meaning, no real like, it's not tied to anything, it's not a last name, it's, it's nothing really. It doesn't even like talk about what she does. And she gets a letter in the mail from the state and the state alleges that she had a former employee who was injured and is now filing a workers comp claim against her. What's the problem? She never had any employee. So she's never had an employee because she's not in a business that requires her to have employees. So this poor lady gets this letter in the mail. She, she freaks out. She doesn't know what to do. She asks her friend for an introduction to a lawyer. They introduce her to me. And I'm, I say, listen, have you been served? She goes, no, I just had this email to me. I'm like, okay, well, I think we need to have a, a service. That's where they officially go. And, and sure enough, a few weeks later, she was officially served by a process server, notifying her of an administrative hearing. And so now she's got to take time out of her day. Um, ultimately, she did go and hire a lawyer. And so that's money out of her pocket to literally go and try to correct somebody else's mistake. And I like to call it the case of the mistaken identity but think about it. It's because she picked a company with a name that was so easy to be mistaken with another company. And in fact, when I looked it up, there were like 20 companies where maybe just a tiny variation, literally a comma or a period or a space um, or a, a single letter. And I can see why somebody would make the mistake. So hopefully we'll be able to clear it up. Unfortunately, that's going to cost this lady some money out of pocket. It's really unfair to her. Um, but that's maybe one of the consequences of having a name that's too not unique, let's put it that way. Um, so to, to kind of summarize guys, be careful when you're naming your companies, 
maybe it's worth it just adding a couple extra words, maybe adding something that's unique or an identifier so that it's less likely to have a case of mistaken identity and you're less likely to run into trouble. So guys, if you have any questions, um, this is what I do, give me a you know, call, Eric Rodebois.